Hi everybody, Ben here. I am with the legendary Koji Igarashi, uh, somebody who's had a big influence on my life, who's been the man, the face behind Castlevania, and now with its spiritual successor, Bloodstain, we're going to do an interview. I'm going to ask you a few questions. And my first question really is, is about uh, how this project, the nature of it, is different than, than what you've done with your work at Konami. How has it been uh, doing a Kickstarter game? Has the process of, of development been different? Has it been more difficult? Uh, what were the unexpected challenges of working with the crowdfunded format? So first of all, um, before I started the Kickstarter project, I had to um, start up my own company. And before um, com doing doing so, um, I, I only had to focus on developing a game. So being uh, having to start up a new company was very um, difficult and challenging for me. Um, but when I started the Kickstarter project, there's a good and a bad side to it, um, I believe. Uh, the good side of it is that we could share the new um, contents with the public and um, ask for their opinions on it and feedback, which is um, which would very much affect the development in a good way. But um, also in a in a bad way, I feel is that um, since we are sharing uh, new contents um, in a, um, like every month or so, very constantly, uh, we we're a little worried that um, we wouldn't have enough promotional materials um, before the release when we, we want to um, hype up the game. And I think that's what um, we're a little bit worried about. Talking about those fans, the people that are the most supportive for Bloodstain, they're, they're people that have been with Castlevania for a long time, and this is a series that has a lot of legacy behind it, um, where you have games like Castlevania Symphony of the Night that are so influential that you can walk around the show floor and see uh, a bunch of games that are taking direct inspiration from it. Um, but not only that, it's a series that has changed a lot over time. Um, how has that been a burden on you? That that expectation of legacy, uh, trying to figure out how much of those old games to put into Bloodstain, and then uh, compromising that with new things that you want to do and new directions that you want to go in. I know. I know. So um, we feel a lot of pressure since the very beginning. I mean, um, working on a long-running franchise, the Castlevania series. There's always been a, a hardcore fan um, in with the, the Castlevania series, and every time we release a new game, this the same kind of pressure we have is very similar to the pressure we we're receiving with Bloodstain. So um, it's a it's a good kind of pressure. It's not a bad pressure, and this is something that we're very very used to. And there are certain limitations um, in development that we could. Uh, that we could do and um, in order to sort of answer the fans demands and expectations um, there's um, really so much we could do so we're just gonna work very hard and believe that fans will really love the game and yeah we're just gonna work very hard mm -hmm. I have to ask so you started your own company you're serving as producer and scenario writer on Bloodstained and now you're here doing press interviews it just seems like your schedule is as packed as it could possibly be how many hours of sleep are you averaging on any given night? So, um, so well, I, I am busy, but um, it's not because I'm busy, but uh, I only take about like four or five hours sleep, and this is something that's very normal for me. You're saying that's normal for you? Have you just been living your whole life that way, and you're just you're totally fine with four or five hours? So yeah, it's it's pretty normal for me to only sleep like four or five hours. But back in the day when I was super busy and well, developing a game, um, I only slept for like maybe two hours and on average. And and even when I was sleeping for only two two hours, I, I had this kind of like natural high, I guess. What would you call that? It's kind of like yeah. So um, I kind of enjoy that. Um, just yeah. So being it, just sleeping for two hours was totally fine for me. That is impressive. I, that, that is very impressive. Uh, <laughs> back to the Kickstarter. I feel like with Kickstarter and with, with crowdfunding, uh, there's more of an openness there than there is with traditional game development. And because of that openness, you're showing the game um, and all of its various parts at different stages. Um, and because of that, you're, you're showing the game uh, when it maybe isn't necessarily its, its most polished, its most ready to go, um, because there's that desire for communication because, because people have uh, directly supported it. Um, has that been difficult to kind of get the message across of, hey, this is still a work in development, um, we're, not, we're not quite there yet? Have fans been receptive to that? Have they been supportive um, at those different points? 
Yeah, so it's um, there's a lot of different comments, a lot of um, you know maybe if we showed um, our work in progress and there's there's all these different feedback that we receive, and some of them are good, some of them are bad, but like we we listen to all the the um, feedbacks, but um, we kind of think to ourselves like, oh, do I agree with this comment or do I um, you know disagree with it? And we still have this um, thing um, or how should I say a way of thinking that um, like we we do um, accept the feedback but at the same time if you don't like agree with it we might just slide it and uh, we can't listen to all of it so um, in regards to sort of the, all the comments and you know people are gonna say even if it's a polished work or um, they're gonna still say something about it and yeah and um, it's really no different if we share a work in progress or a completed uh, piece and mm -hmm. So it sounds like the the mentality of whether it's it's the final thing or the work in progress, you still uh, kind of have to commit to that that vision and accept whatever people are going to say, regardless. Um, my last question is, Igarashi, you've been working um, in sort of this gothic horror style primarily for for a very long time, and uh, Bloodstained is a, is a callback to Castlevania, of course. Uh, I have to wonder. Are you still as fascinated by, by creatures of the night, about uh, the blood and about organs playing loudly? Like, that, that sort of aesthetic, how do you, because you've been so entrenched in it, how do you keep your passion for it? How do you remain in love with something that you've been associated with for so long? So, yes. So um, originally, I before I even started this whole project and you know creating games, I, I really loved the gothic horror style from the very beginning. So this came kind of naturally for me. I mean, I even have like stained glasses in my house. So I mean, I I, I love the you know whole the whole gothic um, horror thing um, style, and it, it just came kind of naturally. I mean, it's something that I always liked, and yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. I said that that was my last question, but knowing that you have stained glass windows in your house, I feel like I just need one more quick one. How many, how many whips do you own? I don't have any in my house. <laughs> okay, okay. A little surprising, but just on the road then, just road whips. Cool. Uh, thank you so much, Igarashi, for your time. I have been playing your games since I was a kid, and I've just, I love Castlevania. It means so much to me, and it's so cool that, that you've been able to do Bloodstain, and it's been met with so much enthusiasm. So I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Bloodstain! <laughs>